Happy New Year everyone. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm perfect for kicking off this new year. We're just going to be chatting about my 2023 handbag wish list, but more of like in a different introspective thoughtful kind of way and really i'm going to need your help so much to decide on what my wish list items will ultimately be because i have a whole bunch but i want to pare it down to seven handbags only for 2023 so my approach going into this new year and you know after taking stock of everything that happened last year and everything i bought last year i really want to be more intentional with my purchases this year not that i wasn't intentional last year i just think that i have so many so many for me handbags already that going forward whatever it is i am purchasing has to be really really intentional i'm i'm going to be trying not to buy duplicate styles or duplicate colors although that's very hard because i do love and appreciate these things to me they are works of art i'm training my mind and i think i've done well with that at the end of last year was training my mind to appreciate these works of art in the store whereby it's okay for me to love these items to admire these items but then it's okay to also leave them in the store like i don't have to bring ev home everything i love or everything i admire right like i've also learned within the last two three years that i need to before making some purchases do more research and i think this is more so with luxury purchases which is kind of why i didn't make that many luxury designer purchases last year i did the year before but what i learned from those luxury purchases is i need to do more in-depth research before buying those pieces so this is why i'm saying i have to be more intentional going into this year with my handbag purchases because i do want to add more luxury designer purses in my collection now don't get me wrong i'm still going to buy the things i absolutely love and buy them at full price if i can afford to and if i want to but what more research and more intention will mean or what that will look like is that before splurging on those luxury pieces before buying those things at full price i'm going to research on how other people find the bags how it translates with into their lifestyle if it's something i can buy on the resale market if i would prefer to buy it secondhand or if it's something where i want that new in-store experience you know these are things i have to think more deeply about and decide before going forward to purchase the handbag i'm also deciding that instead of purchasing anything that i absolutely love or that i think will be great to add to my collection i would rather save and wait for outlet reserve items now what the whole coach game with their boutique and outlet has taught me over the last couple of years is that certain items will make it to the outlet reserves and it's just a matter of trying to figure out which will and which won't and so i would rather not purchase some things full price or many things actually not purchase many things from coach full price and wait not just for it to go on sale but wait for it to hit the reserves because then by that when that long duration anything from four months to a year when that long gap has passed i may have completely fallen out of love with that bag at that point so then when it shows up on the reserves it's either i really still want it and then i buy it or i'm not just bothered about the bag anymore so i've come to realize that because in the past year, there have been bags that showed up on the reserves, the outlet reserves um, for coach that I really like and I want, but because I haven't saved up for them at that point, I'm not able to buy them. Like I'm not just going to dip into my account and just buy any bag just because it shows up at a discount on the at the outlet. But if I do have that sinking fund that I have saved for that specific purpose, I'm going to feel a whole lot better making that purchase at that time. Now for this year, I'm, do I'm going to try to restrict myself to a seven handbag list so five bags that i'm going to put on a wish list somewhere where this year these are the absolute must buys for the year and then two ba two bags that are kind of like my out of the blues on a whim bags because i know for a fact that new collections are going to come out this year and the bags that are going to be on my wish list now are bags that have come out the previous year or years past not taking into account new bags that are going to come out this year so i'm making it seven bags five that are now going to be on a wish list that are from previous collections and two bags that come out this year or that I just um, get to know of this year that I feel like I want or will be a good fit for my collection. So that's how I want to organize it for 2023. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, and you know, it's not so easy because already, already 
Coach Outlet has a re- has released a new style bag. It's called the Peyton Hobo. And guys, guys, I'm I'm tempted to pull. I, I'm almost already saying I'm going to buy that bag. And this is just the first of January. <laughs> just the first of january oh my god so you see this is these are the things that i have to think about i have to plan for going forward so that i make more intentional purchases now amongst my wish list items within this whole list that i'm going to curate i want to make room for designers that i have not tried before that i don't have in my collection i'm trying to not move away from coach but just explore other things because i do love all these other beautiful things out there and i really want 2023 to be the year where i explore all these other designers so i really want to try fendi as a luxury designer to um, experience that luxury a way or as a replacement for lv you know the chanel's the ysl's out there you know those names or just to test that brand on its own i have uh, during the end of last year began to look more into Fendi and I like what I see. So I really want to test out more of Fendi this year. I also want to finally dip my toes into Polen. I've been talking about Polen for the past two years, but I've never bought anything from Polen yet. And I really want 2023 to be the year when I do. So for, for me, Polen will be that contemporary designer whereby I buy less coach and I buy my first Polen or use Polen as a replacement for, for the likes of like Chloe, Loewe, uh, Bottega, because I do think that they have the same design aesthetic and the same vibe for a better price points than all of these other designers that I have mentioned that being said I would still like to also dip my toes into Chloe as a brand now I'm not the biggest fan of Chloe the aesthetics I believe can be gotten elsewhere with brands like Marc Jacobs and Poulain uh, or even Tory Burch but there is this particular handbag that I've had my eye on for the past two months it's the Chloe straw tote and going into summer or warm weather vacations I think it is a great tote with a good price point if you can get it as a discount so that is something I'm also looking at I'm also of course looking at my YSL clutch, which I've had for years and years and years as a wish list item. So I'm hoping that 2023 will be the year that I purchase this item. And so to help me do this and achieve this goal of seven handbags this year, <laughs> I am hoping that for the first six months of the year, I'll be able to maintain a no buy. So buy no handbags, no designer shoes, no designer clothing for the first six months. So from January to June, nothing. And then I would have been able to save enough in my handbag or designer goods sinking fund to be able to afford these items on my wish list. And to further help me to do that is where the outlet reserves are going to come into play, you know, take advantage of sales. Like by that time of the year, it, the, most people will be having semi-annual sales or end of season sales, that kind of thing. And then also take advantage of websites like Matches Fashion, Farfetch that have, you know, discounts on these designer items once in a while. Also, um, websites like 24s which i just discovered and absolutely love 24s is also a retailer they're based in um france it is part of the lvmh brand so it is a subsidiary of lvmh so it is a very 100 percent authentic and a great site to buy designer items like max mara mark jacobs coach alexander wang um chloe and all of those good stuff so these are all the things that these are the tricks and the tips that I'm going to be putting into use hopefully this year to see if I can knock all of these big items off my wish list. Now, let's get into the wish list itself. This is where I need your help to help me curate these five bags, five of seven. And I'm going to start listing them, but I'm going to categorize them as well so you guys can get an idea of what I'm thinking. So first, I'm going to list my forever wish list items. Now, this is items I've had on my wish list for the past three, five years that I've just never bought, but I still really want. So if after five years, I still want these handbags, then they're definitely forever pieces. I think will, they will be forever pieces in my closet. And first will be the Givenchy Antigona Nano in the color navy. I think I stumbled upon this bag about three years ago, and I've not gotten it out of my head since then it is tiny it is a nano bag but it is beautiful it's so hard to find that ever since it went out of stock on that website i haven't been able to find it i've even checked um resale sites like rebag and uh, the likes but i haven't found it so i'm searching for it and i really feel like i need to take the jump and buy that bag this year because i i've just never stopped thinking about it it is small it is cute if there's a replacement designer bag for that i don't know i'm welcome to your ideas coach hasn't brought anything out in their nano size um, with that shape. But I also haven't seen anything from Polen. Actually, you know what? The Polen numero 1 is kind of similar. Um, I'm not sure if they have a navy color, but it's definitely not patent leather. But yeah, that is is on my forever wish list, the Givenchy Antigona Nano. 
for sure, especially in the color navy. If it's not in the color navy, then I really don't want it. <laughs> Now, speaking of Polen, the Polen numero 1 is actually another bag that has been on my wish list forever and ever and ever. And on, I think why I've not been able to buy the bullet and um, purchase this bag is because of the color options that it comes in. I feel like I have similar bags in similar colors in my um, collection already. I love the style of that bag. It makes me think of a happy face with dimples, like a smiling face with dimples. That's what I think of when I look at that bag. It's such a beautiful style and I love Polen for their aesthetics, but I just feel like I haven't found the perfect color in that bag for me and my collection. So I really want to know what you guys' thoughts are on the color options for that bag. And if you could pick one Polen numero on, what color will it be? If you could pick just one, what color would that be? Another item that has been on my forever wish list is the, the Celeron envelope clutch particularly in the color blanc vintage so the white i just love that style shape and bag i really what i really loved from saint laurent and what attracted me to the bag to the brand was the kate bag it began with the kate's bag again because it was in that flat envelope style then began to gravitate towards the lulu line and i still love the lulu line i just feel like there's other options now from coach and even kate spade recently that give me that envelope lulu quoted vibe if you get what i mean but however i still want that envelope clutch from saint laurent because you can transform there are ways to transform that clutch into a crossbody bag i don't know if i should kick it off my forever wish list i don't want to i really want it Maybe I should change the color option that I want. I don't have any white bag in that shape style. Um, I do have a crossbody white bag from Coach. It is the chalk camera bag, but that's a camera bag. So the style is and the vibe is very, very different. The Saint clutch is more elevated. I can use it uh, all dressed up for formal events, but I can wear it casually as well. So definitely on my forever wish list, hopefully maybe it will make my permanent wish list for the year and finally on my forever wish wish list is the lv speedy 30 in the monogram version now this is one that comes or goes on and off from my wish list um i do like like lv as a brand i've always liked them particularly for their canvas pieces i do have uh, two lv bags in my collection already i have the favorite mm in the damien sir prints which i absolutely love that's my favorite bag from lv and then i have the um, alma bb in the Demia event print. And so I want a monogram bag from LV. My ideal monogram bag will be the Alma BB in the uh, monogram that you can customize by yourself. So monogram print with black leather handles and black leather trim. That's what I want. It is a custom bag, so it's a made to order bag. And I feel like I can never get that bag unless I sell my Alma BB in Demia Ben because I, I really don't need two Alma BBs. So this is where the research beat comes in. If I had done my research, I would have seen that I could get the monogram with the black leather because the only reason why I didn't buy the monogram Alma BB was because it came with the Vachetta leather. And at that time, I wasn't confident enough to buy uh, Vachetta leather, but I think I am now, but I would just rather have that Alma BB in monogram with the black leather because to me, it just is way more elegant than the Vachetta leather version or the Demia Ibn version. Now, because I can't have that yet, because I have my Demia Ibn Alma and I'm not selling it anytime soon, I want the Speedy 30 in monogram with the Vachetta leather. Again, I'm not a fan of barrel bags. I'm not crazy about barrel bags, but I did try this bag in store and I fell in love with it or I fell in love with the idea of it. So I don't know if it's something that will work well for me with my lifestyle and my collection, but it is something that has been on my wish list for a long time and it is what I want from LV for a monogram option. Okay, so now let's go into options um, from my new wish list list, if that makes sense. So these are items that are on my wish list, but just newly made it into my wish list. And they're just two. And the first is the Coach Rogue Top Handle. Now, I fell in love with this style when I went into the store in what, October, November, and I tried it out. Prior to this time, when the bag is new, right? It came out last year. Many people were like, oh, it's so small, it's so small, it's so small. And I had difficulty understanding why it was called the Rogue, right? They could have named it anything else because it looked nothing like the Rogue apart from the handles to me. Anyways, when I went into the store and tried it out, I absolutely loved it. It is not small for me at all. You guys know I love small and mini bags and I think it is the perfect size for me. It will fit so well in my collection. Honestly, next to the beat line, I think the top handle line is one that I really enjoy having multiples of. 
That being said, there's a lot of colors and I know that there will be more to come this year because I did hear from my essay that there are more colors in the works for this year. We just don't know what those colors are yet. So I'm tempted to wait and see what else comes out. But there's also this particular one colorway that I've fallen in love with and that is the Coco Jacquard with the black leather. I've not been a fan of Coach Jacquard or any Jacquard to be honest until now. That jacquard combination that cocoa colored combination the signature sees in cocoa with the black leather i think it's beautiful chef's kiss absolutely love i fell in love with it i have the shoes in that colorway and now i absolutely want the rogue top handle in that colorway as well so my dilemma is wait and see if they come out in a colorway that i would love more or buy this cocoa jacquard version now and still buy whatever comes out that i fall in love with later so that's where i am a bit undecided Next on my new wish list is the Fendi baguette. So I did mention that I wanted to get into Fendi and what better bag to wet your feet with at Fendi than the baguette. It's a classic. It's one that I know I will have in my collection forever and ever. Now what I have to prepare for with this bag, of course, because it is luxury designer is the price point. Also, I have to decide if I want one that screams Fendi or one that is a more discreet version. So I did see the leather version in yellow on the website. Now, if I don't see it in person, I'm very unsure about the yellow because you know how I feel about yellows, but I really did like it. So these are things I have to consider before pulling the trigger on this bag or before even deciding if I want it on my 2023 wish list or not. Now at this point, I think I should talk about one bag that is on my unicorn wish list. This is a bag that no matter what happens, if I see it somewhere for sale at a good price, I'm going to buy it. And this is the Coach and Basquiat collection beat 18 bag in the color ivory. I wanted this bag since the day it came out. I made the huge mistake of my collection and handbag uh, career not buying it when it came out. I've talked about this so many times on my channel. I went into the store to look at the bag. They didn't have it, but they offered to order it for me. They had the one in the other color, the darker brown, I think Elm was what it was called. I saw that I didn't like it, but because I couldn't see the ivory version, I decided to buy the plain ivory instead. And that was the biggest mistake I have ever made because now that bag is sold out. I missed it when it was at the reserves. It sold out in a matter of minutes at the reserves and it is currently nowhere to be found. Even on the resale websites, re secondhand websites, I can't find it. And when it does pop up once in a while, they're at exorbitantly high prices. So it's a unicorn bag that I really, really want. And one that I think will never leave my wish list, but I can't buy because I can't find it. And finally, let's go into the group of handbags that might make the list because they are maybes. So these are bags that just come up from time to time through the years that I like. I've never pulled the trigger on, but I kind of still want. So first is the Rogue 12 crossbody from the Mint and Surf collection. I did try that bag in store. I loved it. I did not want to pay full price for it. And I was waiting for it to go on sale. It somehow ended up being sold out in Canada, which is weird because there's so many bags that hardly sell out in Canada. Like you see them sell out in the US, but Canadians are more conservative when it comes to fashion. But the Rogue 12 of all style bags from the Mint and Surf collection sold out, which is crazy. So I hope maybe sometime this year it'll pop up on the outlet reserves and maybe I'll have saved from my January to July no buy to be able to afford it when it does show up. Next are a couple of field totes also from Coach. Now, I do love the field tote design from Coach, but I do not currently own one. And that is a style that I think I want to look into getting. So I have three that are on my list. The first is the quilted uh, black in the size 40. The second is the denim that came out last year, the blue denim in the size 22. And then the third is the new denim that just came out in the size 40, again, in black. So I have two blacks, the quilted pillow and the denim black. So both blacks both in size 40. One is sold out, one is available at full price. And so my love or my dream would have been the pillow quoted 40, but it is currently sold out. I don't know if it's going to eventually show up on the outlet reserves. The denim, black denim 40 is currently available at full price. I do not think I want to pay as much for a fabric bag. Maybe if it was leather, yes, but for a fabric, no, no thank you. And then there is the size 22 denim, in the blue denim that came out last year, also currently sold out. So again, I don't know if it's going to show up in the outlet reserves, but this is why I have to be ready if it ever does, right? So of these three, I feel like I only need one. And if you guys could give me your ideas or opinions as to which one of the three, either of the 40s and the 22, I would really, really appreciate that.
And to round out my maybe list is the Clio Faux Fur Bucket Bag in the color green from Kit Spade. I showed this bag in my last vlog in uh, November, I think, or was it early December? And this bag is so beautiful. It's a bucket style bag, but with a chain handle in the color green. I really, really wanted to buy it, but I bought the um, Sam Hobo instead in metallic silver, which I absolutely love and I'm happy I went with. But I have still been thinking about that clear bucket bag, especially because it's green, especially because it is full for. It's just a beautiful, nice sensory bag. And it's one where if I don't have it, it's not going to be the end of the world, but it'd be nice to buy, especially since I know it's going to come up on sale soon. Now that we're in January, um, the holidays are behind us. So those type of holiday cold weather bags are going to be making their way to sale very soon. So maybe I might pick it up on sale, maybe not. I am still undecided about that. And that is everything that I'm thinking of buying and my thought process and my attitude towards handbags and collecting and buying and curating my collection going into 2023. Now to see the bags that I did buy in 2022, you want to click on this video here and go watch my list of handbags purchased last year. Thank you guys so much for watching my video and I will see you in this one. Bye.